I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. <laughs> oh. Evelyn and I are going to find out how's the hike on Jasper's South Boundary Trail. Woohoo! Yes, Jasper's South Boundary Trail. Ho oh, ho ho! Pretty excited about this one. Of course, the trail doesn't start anymore at Medicine Lake like it used to inside the park. You actually have to drive out basically to Hinton and then turn down the mountain range through some coal mining areas and some very fun roads. I suggest a pickup truck. Um, <laughs> Or something with, you know, some clearance. So now today, we're going up over Rocky Pass or Cardinal Pass, whichever you like to ta uh, refer to it as, and uh, drop down into the Medicine Tent Valley for the night. And then we'll be on the south boundary proper. But this is the only access now to uh, this end of the south boundary trail. So, big landmark for us right away we'll be at about 1.7 ish kilometers where we get off this road or seismic line and uh, take a little left onto the trail so we have to keep a close eye out for that and then we should be good to go 1.63 kilometers according to Gaia and this is your turnout uh, if you've been on the Canadian Rockies uh, trail guide website there is a picture of this uh, on there, this exact intersection, which is why I knew what I was looking for. Uh, one of the things I want to say about the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide is it's not only a wonderful book, but they post trail updates online, and they also have links to blog posts and things where people have done some of these trails, and, and they comment below. So I think the old guide used to say 2.2 kilometers to this cutoff, and I think there is another cutoff but this is at about, I'd say the 1.6 to 1.7 mark. So, all right, that's good. We're now officially on the trail to get up to Rocky slash Cardinal Pass. We've already seen how many piles of bear scat? Like three. Yeah, two or three piles of scat. There's horse poop along this trail, so at least we know this is the right way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right, that's good. Happy that we've uh, managed to do that. <laughs> And now uh, up to the pass. We descended just over there and we've actually made a right. We're following the Cardinal up here. Obviously there's the track over there. So we're gonna cross. Yes. Yeah, so when you get here, just go upstream. Obviously, you know, <laughs> the pass is up there. So uh, we're going to find a little place to cross that isn't that. quite that deep. And isn't that either. And uh, keep heading up this valley. Another crossing of the Cardinal. Wow. I can't do that. I'm too short. She's moving pretty good. I'd say Evelyn up there. Yeah, I All right, let's go up there and cross and... Uh, Keep going. The climb has begun. Oh. I'll try to stop panting long enough to just say wow. Finally opening up, heading toward the pass. Wildflowers are still blooming. Here's they're, classic they're, mountain pass right here. Yeah, the, well, yeah, a classic approach to it, that's for sure. Um, kind of at the tail end of the wildflowers, so that's nice. We still have some to look at. And as I pant, I'll just turn around. We've come from down there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the track we've been hiking. We, we came up over and looked to the 
our right, Evelyn's like, whoa, there's the beautiful lake. If I was a guessing man, I, I'm going to say it anyway, Evelyn, I said I wasn't going to say it, but I think this is probably the headwaters of the Cardinal River up here. I mean, where are they except here? Right. And uh, some beautiful waterfalls coming down that line in there. And we are heading that way. And I just said to Evelyn that I wasn't expecting Rocky Pass, this whole part of the hike, to be as beautiful as this. It's, it's quite sweet. It's amazing, yeah. Like an instant payoff on day one, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to climb up. <laughs> oh yeah, we had a, a fun climb that sucked. But uh, as we were just discussing, that's really the only way you get to see this stuff. But I mean, you could do a day hike here. Oh, for sure, but you still got to climb up the hill. Yeah, then you just walk back. <laughs> Anyway, beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna keep rolling here because there it is. There's the sign. Here we are. There's the boundary to Jasper National Park. That doesn't mean we're on the south boundary. Correct, we're not yet on the south boundary trail. We'll certainly mark that occasion when we get there, but uh, this, is just access point that's left. this feels good. Not a bad spot for lunch, eh? Heck of a waterfall back there, but now we thought we were mostly going downhill. We gotta just skirt this ridge for a while and then go down. So that's uh, not the most pleasant surprise. But we'll do it. I've waited for this moment for a long time. Here it is. The South Boundary Trail. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Unfortunately, <laughs> Jacques Lake and Jasper, that way, uh, gone. Can't do it. Trail's done. But there's the campsite. A couple hundred meters up this way. And then uh, there's the South Boundary. Here it is. So we're going to actually head up the south boundary, but then for the rest of the hike, heading that way. I'm pretty stoked. I'm finally yeah. on the so south boundary. That's the way that we would go if we didn't have to do this access point with Rocky Pass. Yeah, we would have come from Medicine Lake and come down this so way. So you would have come this way and gone that way, but you can't anymore, so they had to intersect the trail. Yeah. With... This saves us uh, a lot of kilometers too. We'll talk about that a little later, but uh, you know, there it is. Hello, baby. <laughs> We've made it to Medicine Tent Campsite. There, of course, the sign. No one's happy with you can go up here to Rocky Fork still, actually. You can still get up that far, I think, and then uh, the trail pretty much... You can probably get to Grizzly, actually, and then the trails... But we don't know for sure. Yeah, we don't know for sure about getting up to Grizzly. Well, it depends on what you want to do. A lot of trees down now up there and stuff, so... But if you're into bushwhacking... Yeah, if you're into bushwhacking, that's probably the trail go for you. Ahead. All right, medicine tent, where we're going to set up our tent. For the night. And we're just going to chill here in this little spot. Have a quick look here. Oh, and then nice. have a quick look, and then we'll, uh, we'll show you around when we're done. Beautiful campsite along the medicine tent river. We've set up over here, kind of out of the way. Not really any tent pads here like you'd expect at, you know, the, the more front, front backcountry type places, you know, like Brazo and Skyline and stuff. But uh, we're also going to try to be open air tonight because really, according to the weather, there should be no chances of any kind of precipitation this evening. Uh, and that's going to change on us. So we're going to take advantage tonight and kind of sleep under the stars a little bit. That's where we are. Food prep area is a little close to where I've set up a tent, but we're going to be super careful. Uh, and, you know, we don't cook, right? So it's all dehydrated stuff. So the chances of spillage and all that kind of stuff is, uh, you know, less. Evelyn's organizing. There's your your bear pole, literally. <laughs> That's literally the bear pole. Um, I'll take you over here and show you the privy. Looks like this could be used here as a tent pad as well. Uh, at least then you'd be further away from the food prep areas and stuff. We are drying our boots. 
over here in the last rays of sunshine and our socks are already dry and the last part of your tour of the medicine tent campsite is the privy and you better keep an eye out for it because if you're looking for one of the big green cans or one of those uh, or an old outhouse you're not you'd be like where's the privy where's the privy here's the privy there it is a very comfortable log and a hole. So uh, probably won't show you that tomorrow when it's in use. <laughs> oh. All right, there's your tour of the medicine tent campsite. We're gonna have our supper. Well, that's the end of day one, 11.4, yeah. 11 11.5. Yeah, like 11 and a half kilometers down here from uh, Rocky Pass. Nice evening. Gonna turn in the tent here now and just kind of relax. We've left the rain fly off, which is a first for us. Uh, weather's gonna change on us tomorrow night though, so we thought we'd try that tonight, see the stars. I'm gonna say goodbye to my false sense of security. <laughs> That's right. That's still not on rain tarp, baby. Doesn't do much. But if we hear something, because we heard something a long time ago, like we were in the Fundy Circuit and we heard something big walk through the campsite. Probably a deer or a moose. Yeah, but we couldn't, um, couldn't, we couldn't see. see it. So yeah. now if someone's, you know, roaming around, we'll see it. Yep. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. No. We Tomorrow, uh, about nine and a half kilometers, a little under that, to uh, La Grasse or La Grace, which, uh, whichever way you'd like to say it. So we'll see that. We'll see you in the morning. Morning, day two of the South Boundary Trail. Woohoo! Still pretty excited to be out here. Um, we're going to head uh, just nine and a half K today, a nice leisurely day to uh, La Grasse and uh, set up there for the night. The first few days are short like that and then uh, they become a little longer. We contemplated putting two days together just to buy a little extra time, but there's really no point because once we get to the end of this trail, toward the end of the trail, we end up uh, in the Brazo Loop area where you have to stick to your permits here uh, on the Wildlands type trails. So you don't, you just go as fast or slow as you like. But, uh, Anyway, that's the plan for today, so uh, I'm going to get sleepy here up, <laughs> and uh, we'll get some coffee and breakfast, pack up and get underway. It was a beautiful night, the moon was out, the stars were out, and uh, just been really, really peaceful by this river, so pretty good start. So let's get moving. Thank you, Medicine Tent. That's a fun little place. And we're going this way. Back past the uh, cutoff to Rocky Pass and on to La Grasse. Okay. Intersection with Rocky Pass, Cardinal Pass. Onward on the south boundary. made a comment to Evelyn looking at the Medicine Tent River. Glad we don't have to ford that. <laughs> and then we came to this, but this is nothing. Trail goes over there. The river's right there, of course. We're following that today upstream. So when you get to this point, just cross and head over back toward the river. This. this is the hardest part, right where you're about to go. You see a marker right there. We've just come down back into the Medicine Tent River. And then if you look really closely, I see a marker on the Yep, street. Evelyn sees a marker way over there. So we got to cross here. By the way, on Gaia or any of those maps, uh, that, not, that doesn't show a crossing here. So uh, here we are. I'll have to check the Nat Geo maps to see. But yeah, we're gonna have to ford here. Water's actually moving pretty good. Yeah, it's really heavy this year. Yeah, so we're gonna have to find a safe spot here and just uh, make our way across, FYI. You can see somebody's put a cairn and there's the marker, but this river is moving swiftly. So, uh, lady, I think we'll go down this way. Across, 
Cross right there. Yeah, that's too deep there. We're gonna go down there and cross over there. Woo! Oh, let's have a look. Oh my gosh, yes it is. <laughs> yeah, you spend a lot of time looking ahead. Sometimes you need to look behind. Whew. Just stopped here to wring out our socks. Good time to talk a little bit about the trip planning for the South Boundary Trail. Um, the trail's not maintained anymore, and, and what Jasper calls it now is a wildlands trail, meaning little to no maintenance, if ever. And uh, just really not, it's just not a, a used trail anymore. Um, especially after they lost the access at, from Medicine Lake, I think uh, anybody's got to come in over Rocky Pass. It just makes it a lot more difficult uh, to, to plan you know, where to park your cars and all, all of that kind of stuff. So I understand why that is. Uh, for, for me, it's just a thrill to be out here. As you know, we lost the North Boundary last year because of the uh, water levels, which, which seem pretty high here right now. Uh, I will say I'll be back out uh, next month on the North Boundary um, without Ebby, but I'll be out there with a couple of other awesome guys who hike on YouTube, and I'll talk more about that later. But, uh, but from a trip planning perspective, you could do this in a lot quicker than we are, but I decided to take every campsite I could get along the way. So basically somewhere between nine and 12 kilometers per day. And I did that for a reason because I just didn't know what condition the trail was going to be in. Um, there's really no new information at Parks Canada. We went in and checked. The last trail report was in 2016. I will say quickly, Canadian Rockies Trail Guide website has some updates. Not only do they have updates on the trail, uh, from themselves, but there are comments there and blog posts of other guys who've gone out and done it And uh, I found that information very useful and I know now that down the trail a little further We're going to run into some problems with route finding which is why again. I picked the shorter days um, If we could double one up, maybe we will at some point But uh, you could certainly go a little quicker and by the end of this video if you you know if you skip ahead and see the different days You'll have a really good idea of what condition the trail is uh, is in as of 2019 because we're going to show you. So um, that's our plan. Going to hit every campsite along the way. Another gravel flats. Just look for the cairn. Always, always fun to come around a corner see a patrol cabin. Just, let's go have a look at this. Okay. okay, by the way, just in case you're out here on horseback, the medicine tent uh, horse camp is just across the river here. Let's go down and have a look at this beauty. Yep, medicine tent warden's cabin. They always pick the best views, don't they? Yeah, let's have a look. Fire warden, look at, oh, come on. That's unbelievable. Gorgeous. Pen for the horses over there. Some firewood all cut up in there. These uh, patrol cabins have so much history. If only we could get inside and read some of the log books, you know. All right, it's a good landmark for us. We work our way down to La Grasse. Just showed you the warden's cabin. We've probably gone half a kilometer and we're at this dry creek bed now. Just wanna show you something here if you're perhaps going the other way. There are a couple markings here on these trees. There's another one over there, unmistakable. In fact, there's another trail like right there. And uh, there's a cairn over there and that's kind of where we thought we were heading anyway, but uh, there's a cairn straight ahead. So when you get here, if you're coming in our direction, uh, look to your left. Do a little diagonal. Hang on. Woohoo! Slip slide in away. Just another one of those fun root finding jobs when you're out here. Just like we thought we've climbed up, just for your reference, quickly let you know there obviously is Parks Canada marker there. So, you know, and you're just basically heading straight across the way there. All right. Remnants of an old bridge. For some reason or another, <laughs> we 
Can't really figure out why they would need that here, but who I knows? I love them to pick this up, move it, move it Yeah, else. we could have used that over at uh, the three river fords we did at uh, first part of the day over the Medicine Tent River, but that's okay. No, it was fun anyway. It was fun. Good test for us. I mean, the river was moving, but uh, good test for us because we know that there's a challenge ahead with some river crossings that uh, will kind of make make or break this hike for us, really. Um, I'll talk more about that later, though. We've still got a ways to go to get to our campsite for tonight and get set up before the rain comes, which it's going to. Another reason why we love these old trails. Look, something bridge. Uh, Oxo, Ixo. There's an N at the end. Oh, oh, okay. So we'll have to look that up. And then if you look up here, I do believe that was the bridge. <laughs> so, uh, it has been many, many, many years. years. Yeah, wow. It's kind of cool though. I like history. So, it's oh, there's nice. so much history out here. It's amazing, but. Whoa, heavy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you walk right by that. Well, somebody was going the other way a little while ago. Final few steps into La Grasse, or La Grace, depending on how you'd like to say it. Rather slow day for us. Got up late and uh, just took it leisurely. So here we are. Little tie up for some horses. Lovely area up here to hang out. Oh, and they have places you can sit if it's raining. Hey, love that too. That's nice. Okay, and, and it may be raining later. Okay, lots of room for tents. Yep, like cool. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna check it out. Oh, water's obviously way down there. Yep. We're gonna check it out, and then once we get set up, we'll give you a campsite tour. We're here, La Grasse, La Grace. And uh, it's funny, I read online, a guy said that he preferred this over medicine tent, but the water was a pain and the water is a bit of a pain. It's down in the meadow, although we've encountered that before. It's no big deal. Uh, my only concern with this campsite is, I mean, where do you put your tent? Obviously that's our tent and that's the eating area and that will not be the eating area. We're actually going to eat over there a little further away from the tent. Uh, the other thing I'll say that I'm not happy about is this is the trail. Now, we just walked in this trail from uh, Medicine Tent Campsite. And Evie, what would you call this trail? Like a bear game trail. Yeah, it's like a poo highway. We yeah. saw three or four bear scat piles of, of enormous proportion. And huge paw tracks. Huge paw tracks. And then every other animal in the park has pooed on that trail and we saw it all today. Uh, anyway, this looked like a good spot to us. At least it's a little tucked off, but then there's a lot of dead trees, including this guy. <laughs> uh, the privy, by the way, up there, it's the uh, one I showed you last night with the hole in the ground and the log strung across. Um, oh, another spot I thought right there might have been okay, but again, lots of dead trees. And uh, like tomorrow night, the wind's gonna pick up with this front coming through. So we wanna be always mindful of, of uh, trees. We thought of coming over here which is another nice little spot, but again, some dead trees. And then there's a little spot, and then there's the bear hang. Sorry, not a little spot, but the bear hang uh, right there. And I've already pre-hung our lines because we are expecting some rain. So there's La Grasse. It's a nice little spot, I like it. Um, it's just kind of weird being uh, right on the trail with your tent pads, especially what is an active game trail. But, uh, well, it is what it is. So we're going to continue getting ready for the rain that's coming. As you can see, it's clouded over. And uh, have a snack and carry on. Fight the mosquitoes. Yeah, there's so many here. Morning. <laughs> well, that's the end of day two. Nine point something kilometers, 9.1 from uh, Medicine Tent Campground to La Grasse or La Grace. Uh, Gorgeous night now. Man, it rained for what, half an hour? Yeah, just thunderstorms. Thunderstorm too. poured, and then of course the sun came back out. So just in time to let us dry some more stuff off. So uh, tomorrow up over the pass, 
about 10 kilometers to our next uh, our next campsite, which I think is Cairn Pass. Um, pretty much uphill for a good chunk of tomorrow, but the pass is supposed to be absolutely spectacular, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, my highlight of the day, down here at the water hole, I'm in my, my, my fake Crocs. Fake? And those are real. Those aren't real Crocs. No, those aren't real Crocs. Oh. I'm in these shoes, and uh, I absolutely, both feet went out from under me while I was bent over, crouching down, and I landed straight backwards. And if I just take the camera for a second, pan around over Evelyn's beautiful fire that she built, uh, there are my clothes having been rinsed. They're all now um, trying to dry. So, oh, speaking of Evelyn's fire, let me just show you that real quick. Pretty good job, kiddo. Thanks. Really good job, I think. It doesn't beat Olivia's on the West Coast Trail. Well, it could though. You just got started. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Anyway, so we're going to enjoy the fire for a little bit, turn in, uh, listen to the the wildlife along the Poo Poo Highway, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll something's see. coming. I'm gonna get up in the middle of the night and I'm just gonna look out of the tent and I'm uh, something's gonna be there. Cool. I hope it's uh not like, a bear. I hope it's an elk or like yeah. a or or a rabbit. Or a moose. No moose. Why? You get some an ugly moose is as bad as a bear or worse. Yeah, I know. So uh anyway, see you in the morning. morning. Wow, what a night. Holy mackerel. Non-stop thunderstorms. And, uh, well, I don't care about thunderstorms, really, because we're in a good spot. Oh, my goodness. It just keeps you awake. I mean, loud, loud, loud thunder. Very close by. And then it echoes and ricochets through the canyons and through the valleys and it's pretty nutty. So everything is absolutely soaking wet. <sighs> so I slept in a little bit. Probably a couple hours later than I planned to, but uh, now we'll just have to get up and have some breakfast. And make our way up over the pass and hope that uh, there are no thunderstorms while we go up over the pass. <laughs> so just 10K, but uh, I think it'll be pretty slow going this morning with all this uh, rain we had last night. It rained all night. So anyway, as much as I hate to say it, up and at them. 65. Our guess is that that's the marker from what used to be the uh, the other trailhead up at Medicine Lake. Anyway, we're underway. It's uh, one of those days where it's going to be hard to regulate our body temperature, I think. Um, kind of wet, kind of cold. Check the weather, big change coming today. Lots of wind and then it's going to dip down the temperatures. I think it's going to be 4 Celsius overnight. And I mean, we're equipped for that, that's not a problem. But uh, quite a change from the last two days. Rain didn't do us any favors last night, swelling everything up like this, which uh, doesn't bode well for us a little further down the trail where we have lots of different river fords to do, including one that we may have to take the horse trail, but I'll talk about that as we get there. Uh, that's actually going to be the make or break point for this hike if we can get across, but uh, anyway Nice job Ev Okay Lenses are a little blurry I'm sure Because it is raining. It's a steady rain not heavy heavy, but steady and we are soaking wet. but views as we head toward the pass are starting to improve and even in the rain Gorgeous. Oh yeah, there they go. Oh, we just scared them. We did. Well, they just took off. Huh. Must have hurt us. It's a pretty sweet, sweet little arrangement they got going. Yeah, it's a good looking spot, isn't it? Gorgeous. Hmm. 
This is one of those spots in a meadow where it can get really tricky, but we have finally see the track over there. It goes up that way, so that's good. Now we just have to make our way across this water and back onto the track. This is not just a feature of the south boundary. I mean, this happens everywhere. You get in these meadows and you just, there's no flagging or whatever. But there's the trail right there, Ev. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so we just have to kind of make our way down there. Okay, that works. Making our way up to the pass. Some beautiful wildflowers of the short variety. Just pretty typical for this area. Uh, still looking around. If I show you back there, I mean, there's your Medicine Tent Valley. Unfortunately, you can't see beyond because of all the clouds and rain. The uh, beautiful view back that way is obscured, but hey, Still pretty awesome. Woohoo! Approaching the pass. Cairn Pass. 2,250 meters. Highest point on the South Boundary Trail. We're gonna go down just off the other side here. Hang on, Ev, and take a break out of the wind. But let me give you a panorama. We haven't found the Cairn yet. No. Sure, where the cairn is. We've looked up, there's lots of things that look like cairns. But we might not be able to see it because it's so foggy. Oh, rainy, foggy, cloudy. Yeah, I don't know. All right, there it is. Cairn Pass. Whew. Making our way down now through the willow bath. A little tough to find the track in a couple places, but obviously we, we know where we're going. Less than three cane out of the campsite. And uh, we need to get there because uh, it's chilly. I would, we're going to check the temperature when we get into camp, but it's cold up here. Windy. The wind's going to pick up later to 12 to 14 knots, <laughs> according to my guy, uh, Garmin. So that's pretty breezy. We're going to get down and get dry and get in our sleeping bags for a while just to kind of warm up from this. You know, you hike in the summer out here, you don't know what you're going to get. Good snow. So, you gotta keep keep dry and warm as best you can, as you as you know. One last look back at Chile Cairn Pass, and we think way up at the top there is the Cairn, the very very top. We don't know for sure. So why don't you come on out yourself after watching this video and have a look. Although there it was, at some point, somebody's Cairn. <laughs> oh, we can't wait to get down under here, even though we love mountain passes. And that view is spectacular. Imagine what it would be like on a blue sky, sunny day. Just let that wander around in your mind yeah, for a we'll moment. we'll never know, so let's get going. Yeah, we'll never know, because this is a one-off, I think, for us, but... <laughs> Oh, onward to Cairn Pass campsite. Wow, what do you think of that, Ev? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Spectacular, oh my goodness. What I find so cool about stuff like this is that, like, all this stuff, like, you know, you drive through the parks and you go to, like, Louise and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But, like, all this stuff just behind the mountain. Yeah, it's all hidden, right? And you don't know it's yeah. here. Like it's a, really cool. I, I never knew this was here until I just walked over that hill. Yeah, who knows if there's a flowers here? Like, no yeah. one knows. It's like so cool. That's why we love being out there, you know, like out there. And on the south boundary. You're out there. You are out there. Coming into Cairn Pass campsite. That's good. Nice early day for us again. We planned that. As I said, I. Moose antlers, oh, let's go look at those. Yeah, it's a little early, we're gonna stop anyway. We could have kept going, we actually feel pretty good right now. But uh, it's wet and cold and 
we're done. So uh, yeah, there you look. Whew. That's an enormous fire pit. Look at that. Wow. Look at those antlers. It's like an antler collection. Look. Holy mackerel. That's huge. That is. Wow. All right, we're gonna set up camp and then I'll, uh, as always, show you around. There's our view for the night. Wind's picking up like it's supposed to. We come in from down here, trail goes down there. We, we, we already showed you this. Uh, this is a combo horse and hiker camp, which is why it's kind of uh, laid out the way it is. We decided to set up over here, uh, obviously where they tie up some horses at, at some point, uh, just to get a little shelter from the wind and the rain. We'll hang our food here. Again, it's all kind of compressed, the privy up that way. And then over here, Snack time. Filtering some water here. We're having some stovetop stuffing, which is really easy to do on the trail. And uh, just some other stuff. And then we're gonna just get ready for the night because it's gonna drop down to probably about freezing, according to what I pulled down from Garmin. So, uh, pretty good day though, eh, kiddo? Yeah, I'm freezing. Have you still cold? We actually went into our tents for a short time and got into our sleeping bags and then and you know put on some dry clothes and then warmed up for what 45 minutes i don't know i was asleep have you had a little nap so anyway we're gonna have our snack and dinner and uh just enjoy another evelyn classic beautiful Well, that's the end of day three uh 10 kilometers from the grass up over cairn pass we looked for the cairn didn't we? I think yeah. we saw the cairn. I don't know. It was probably really <laughs> so, big up there. You can, if you're going to come out and do this and you want to see the cairn, bring binoculars. Because, you know, it wasn't a very clear day. It rained on us all day. It was freezing cold. So we didn't linger up there. Uh, we came back down the other side of the pass here to Cairn Pass campsite, which is a horse and hiker campsite. And uh, you can tell. Lots, yeah. lots of horse poop everywhere. But, uh, you know, whatever. So we had a nice fire. Evelyn made a great fire. We dried some stuff uh, by the fire, which is pretty cool. And ended up being a pretty good evening. Going to get pretty cold tonight, though. So we're going to bundle up. And uh, about 12.8 kilometers tomorrow to the Cairn River, which uh, we have to ford. No big deal. It's usually, what, uh, calf deep, maybe up to your, your knees or something. But uh, from what I read, the 2013 floods did some washouts, and it might be very interesting for us to find our way. So uh, Evelyn's very good at spotting the uh, Parks Canada <clears throat> um, yellow diamonds that are on trees, and we'll just have to kind of pick our way through there. A uh, little tough uh, after 12.8K to be picking your way through that stuff, but we'll be happy to get to camp and, and enjoy the day after tomorrow, however. Well, that's a different story because, uh, from what I understand, access to the South Esk Bridge uh, heading in this direction is um, perhaps impossible to find because of uh, some landslides, some trees down as you exit out of the park and around. So, a uh, gentleman posted online at the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide uh, forums, you know, uh, comment section, maybe take the horse ford. Well... That will be interesting because it's... Yeah, I'm really it's, short. It's very deep. We've already done some fast water fording uh, on this trip, uh, but this will be that would be a whole different challenge. So that's a make or break day for us, really. I'll still, I'll literally swim. You'll swim, will you? I will swim across. I will build a raft. I'll tie it together with paracord. Wood, you know, wood floats. Paracord, oh yeah, good. Wood I'll does have, float. Uh, yeah, I know. I'll have my backpack on top and I will swim it across because I am not about to turn around and see the exact same thing over again. And yeah, no, I'm finishing. Uh... Well, we'll be sure to get that on video. <laughs> <Gonna> swim. <laughs> anyway, we're going to bundle up. This was a good day despite the rain, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Morning, day four on the south boundary. As you can see, weather has improved quite a bit from a rainfall perspective, but if you uh, can catch that cloud up there moving, it's windy. A little shot around camp this morning. Evelyn's still uh, packing up her stuff in the tent. It's cold. Two degrees Celsius this morning uh, when I got up, which is uh, a little nippy, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, really good sleep once I got to sleep. It took a while to get there, but uh, 13 and change today to 
uh, Karen River, we're going to have to ford it at the end, uh, which we know, and uh, we may uh, have a little sketchy trail action going on as well later in the day. So uh, it's going to have the usual coffee, breakfast, and uh, hit the trail. One last look at camp. Karen Pass. Horse poop central. <laughs> Although they did have one of those uh, green privies that they have to fly in. And the fire pit was huge, so you know, we were guessing that maybe because it's also a horse hiker camp, they had some extra amenities. This should be an interesting day. Once we get down a little further where the floods were, Evelyn will show off her root finding skills. <laughs> Let's walk up here and see the view. Evelyn just spotted that cave up there with a waterfall. It's going to be impossible to see on video, but it's right up there. Pretty. Just take a look around. Gorgeous. We'll take a break. I'll be taking this fleece off because even though it's cold, that sun is uh, throwing off some good radiation. So I'm happy about it. Yeah, we are after Freezing yesterday. yesterday. We're heading down. I think we're going to shoot that gap down there. So <sighs> easy walk so far. This is the first intersection into the uh, Karen Warden Station. Um, we're not going to go down there as much as I'd love to see it. It does extend the day a little tiny, tiny bit. Basically loops loops down to the right and then back onto the main trail. I so, see it, the cabin. Yeah, we'll probably get a view up here, so we'll show you that. And if you look over there, there's the Karen Warden cabin. Beautiful spot as always, they get the best places. Uh, we didn't go over there because we'd have to ford the river a couple times, so not interested in that this early in the day. It's coming later. And uh, we were hoping to find a, a viewpoint where we could sit, have our break, and look at it. But uh, this isn't really, isn't really it. But anyway, there you are. Karen Warden Cabin. And this next section of the trail is where we hit the flooded part. And it might be interesting finding our way. But I do have Evelyn. She is the spotter. Of markers. Look at that. We walk so much straight ahead sometimes we forget to look sideways or behind us and I love this. I mean that's amazing but then look over here. Look at all the grass on those slopes with the rock ledges. Pretty amazing. Be nice to see some sheep up there right now or something but day four and we're 30k, more than 30 More than 30k and we're zero I have not seen on the wildlife. <laughs> probably just because dad goes, hello, every time he goes past anything. Well, I think I sound better than that, don't I? I mean, hello. Oh my God. <laughs> See, look, that bird just flew away. It's always my fault. We've made our way to the flood zone and we're looking at these markers. What's interesting about these markers is there's one pointing that way. All right, and then there's one kind of facing that way. So we're gonna stay on this side for now because crossing here is impossible anyway. And uh, see if we can find our way down there. This is the floods from 2013. Took out a lot of the trail on this side, so. Uh, as you can see, all of this would have been washed down. I'm assuming the trail is just up there, but we'll have a look. We found the trail. I mean, it's pretty easy. We know we have to. We know we're supposed to be on this side of the river, pretty much the whole way. So, back there are the markers. If you're coming the other direction, look for those markers. This just all washed out. That's all. I mean, really, that wasn't too bad. Maybe there'll be more up ahead. And if there is. We'll show you. Back in the woods on the left side of the river. So, if that was it from the flooding, uh, that was no big deal. Follow the left side of the river down, climb up, and the track is right there. 
No markers though, so you'll have to figure that one out like we did. But again, just go down maybe 100 meters, Ev, would you say? Yeah, even less. Even less, 100 meters or less, and just climb up the bank. Wow, a little shedding there. Look at that. Woohoo! That is some white hair. I, I originally saw it up there when you were walking, and then I looked here and saw that. There'd be animals around. Wolf? Not a clue. I don't think a rabbit gets that high. No, unless that's what's left of the rabbit. <gasps> no! <laughs> We've just exited down into the riverbeds from, uh, from up here so you can see the marker. All right. That's great. Lots of markers going up that way. <laughs> Where's my marker now? I'll find it. Trail is not over there. Trail, I think the trail's on that ledge over there. We may have to, yep, we may have to pick ourselves down the side of this. Evelyn, I think the trail's up that little thing yeah. there and then along there. I kind of see it. Yeah, no marker, but I think that's where we're gonna head. Yep, that was right. This is the trail. So again, from the floods in 2013, this section got washed out. So what you do is you come out of there, come down around, pick your way up. Be really nice if, uh, if I had something, I'd leave it here for a marker. It'd be really nice if uh, there was a marker like right here on one of these two trees. We could make a cairn, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll build a cairn so people can see it. But uh, yeah, but to remember where this is, just take a screenshot. Yep, just, and save just it. stay left. Just stay left as you come along. Same, say, same as before. Second time, stay left. Well, trail used to go that way. I'm pretty sure, but it's washed out. I we got to cross here. And then cross again. Um, we're still 4K or so from the from the campsite, so uh, I was a little surprised by having to do this, but I don't think we have a choice. But oh man, that water is moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, wish us luck. That is not for the faint of heart at all. That water is moving. I gave Evan a little path to follow. Right there. And uh, I'm gonna turn this off now and keep an eye on her. <laughs> exactly. Oh, 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 that was a double Ford that was really, really tough. Wow, oh, triple Ford, this is nothing. That's crazy right now. There's a, maybe right there you can see in the video, there's a cairn. So you come down out of the woods, you go across there and you Ford here and the water's moving now. He thought I was gonna die. I came back in the water to offer a hand, yep. So now I gotta find a track again and uh, keep heading toward the official Karen River Ford. All right, let's, uh, let's find the trail. More fun route finding. When you do that second and third Ford, bear to the right back toward the river and you'll find the track. Don't go left toward the hills. No track up there. The track's down here toward the water, so. We were on it after a little exploring and uh, gee, I wonder what's next. Okay, so we just exited onto the river flats again from into the woods. And if you look really close, kind of right there, there's a cairn that someone put. Yep. So right when you exit out of the woods back there, go straight. If he was right, follow those cairns. When you come down here, come across the flats, look for those two cairns, and then turn around and boom, there's a yellow diamond right there. And an old flag on the tree from somebody's machete, but. Uh, you have to cross the river again. Yeah, we're, <laughs> how many fords now? Five or six? Yeah. Five or six fords now of the Cairn River. Uh, all of them sketchy because the water feels a little high to me right now, but that could just be me. Mom's gonna kill you when she watches this. Mom's gonna kill me, yeah. <laughs> Only if you don't make it back. No, I'll live. I'll live. And then nobody will be watching this video. That's true. <laughs> so if you're watching it, we lived. We lived. So we found this huge... Colony. Oh, somebody up there barking at us. Oh, another barking at us. Sounds like a squirrel. See if I put my pole over here, what happens? 
Yeah, squirrels are unhappy. Dad! Well, I was just teasing them. I'd never heard a squirrel. Pretty little rat with a tail. Dad! <laughs> well, they're still screaming at us. Yeah, but that must be like some like colony. I... The last section of trail is was horrible. Uh, I think there were 9,406 trees on the trail. <laughs> No, we're uh, we're not far from camp now. One more big ford of the beautiful Can River, and uh, then we should be in camp. So our day is getting uh, closing, coming to a close, coming to the end. So is my ability to speak the English language. Oh look, nine thousand four hundred and ninety-two. I forget I forget what I said a minute ago, but uh, you're going right. I'm going left. Nine thousand four hundred and seven. Is this one? Uh, I see. Okay. Evelyn and I have just bushwhacked because there's a giant tree down there making the trail impassable. I want to show you this. Now this would be cool. Out to South Esk. That would be cool. It's probably the most isolated place in the park. They don't maintain the trail anymore. They don't take reservations anymore. But, you know, you can go. <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to head over to the Cairn River, cross it, and get to the campsite. Our last fort of the day. Beautiful. Nice job, kiddo. Thank you. So number six or seven for us? Yeah. Crazy. Now, just while you're finishing up there, let me look around. Holy mackerel, look where we are. Look at this. This is a gorgeous spot. Pretty sure camp's right over here. Pretty sure that's Mount Dalhousie. I think that's Mount Dalhousie. We love your school as well. Yes. Uh, anyway. I'm applying. Evelyn's applying to Dal. All right, we're heading over. Find the campsite and then we'll show you around. Wow. What do you think of that? That's insane. A uh, little shot of camp here. Evelyn's over there at the river. Uh, freshening up. I did that earlier. Um, obviously, eating area. Always a bit of a mess. Hello, Shadow. <laughs> uh, you know, doing some laundry. That's part of the cleaning up process. You can see our, uh, sorry about that. You can see our tent set up over here. Always looking for trees that could blow down. And then uh, the bear hang is, is right there. Yes, a little close to the tent, but you know, they've all been like that on this trip. And there's the view upriver. This is a glorious, glorious spot. No question about it. So there's camp. Privy, oh, by the way, Privy, kind of back, kind of back that way. It's, uh, we're back to the, uh, we're back to the log in the hole. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, whatever. It's good. I mean, who cares? It doesn't matter to me. I actually don't mind those a bit. So, so I'm gonna go check on Evelyn here. She's been over there quite a while. But, uh, wow, look at that. We're gonna get some dinner started and enjoy that view. And uh, I'm gonna share with you a little bit of trip planning and uh, what's in store for us tomorrow. But for now, let's have a look at that. Well, we both cleaned up, we're good to go. Uh, waiting for our food to hydrate. Evelyn's having pad thai, I'm having the new, uh, well, new to me, beef pho. I uh, love these ones because they come with the lime packets and the and Evelyn's comes with the peanut butter packet. Yeah, it, peanuts. It's cool. It's very, very cool. It takes 15 to 20 minutes to hydrate. So we thought it'd be a good time to just chat a bit about today. Uh, the trail is gone uh, south of the Cairn Patrol cabin. Um, really, you have to ford the river. I think we forded the river four or five extra times. This ford is expected here at the campsite, but those fords were not. So watch for the flagging. The problem if you're coming in our direction is that there's not a lot of flagging in this direction, but if you turn around, the diamonds are on the trees. So if you're heading the other way, probably be a lot easier. Um, and be careful, please. Yeah, be careful on the fords. That's a good point. Yeah. So uh, we used to take our boots off and put Crocs on or some other water shoes. And then we used to undo our hip belts and all that kind of stuff in case we fell that we could throw the, the backpack off and, and, you know, survive as we slammed into a rock. Uh, <laughs> no, but really, we don't do that anymore. I 
decided and, and you know, talked to others. And I think the best And me too. Me too. Yeah. The best boots you can wear are the ones on your feet. If you're crossing rivers like we crossed today. You saw a little bit of how fast they were moving. You don't be slipping around in water shoes. So we left our boots on. It's, we, it's worth it. Yep. And we left our hip belts tight too. And I'll tell you why. When you're in there moving around, you don't want your pack shifting. And without your hip belt fastened and even your sternum strap, you got a problem. Now the sternum strap holds you from moving up top. Hip belt holds you from moving down bottom. I just feel it's safer to stay completely intact as you cross these rivers. And uh, that'll come into play tomorrow because we may, we may have to ford uh, on the horse trail. And I'm going to get Evelyn to uh, take the camera and I'm going to show you on the map what tomorrow brings for us. It's our make or break day. Tonight we're here at Cairn River and uh, just a fantastic spot. And in about two kilometers after we leave here, we're gonna enter the, uh, I think it was 2006 uh, burn that they had here. Uh, it's gonna be pretty sketchy. A lot of dead and fallen trees. Uh, when they burn, they end up falling over in the wind and that blocks the trail. Of course, that's 13 years ago. So <laughs> would expect a lot of new growth. So that's gonna be very interesting to get through here. We're gonna to come to this intersection uh, and then we have a decision to make. This is the horse trail that, that fords the South Esk River twice. It's a challenging ford, we know that, but at least we know the trail is marked and is intact because their horse parties have been out here, we can follow it, etc., and then get to South Esk tomorrow. I've read reports where as you get up here, the trail's gone and there's been a landslide that usually happens after fires uh, because there's nothing to hold the soil in place so you'll get rock slides mud slides because there's no roots you know holding everything together um, and then i also read you can't get to this side of the south esk suspension bridge so it makes the trail kind of useless to us so what we're going to do is we're going to get up early tomorrow and we're going to walk through here and get to here and see if we can make this ford early when the water levels are lower because they're always lower in the early morning higher in later in the afternoon if we can get across here and get on the horse trail we're all set because then we'll just go to south esk less than 9k that was by design because i didn't know what we we're going to get into here this is the challenging part of the trail and as i told debbie this is make or break we get to south esk knock wood this shouldn't be too bad um and of course once we get to brazo it's a piece of cake so that's our plan for tomorrow um up early and <laughs> see if we can do it what do you think ev yeah we can do it we can do it all right that's the plan now dinner what a view what a day river fording mount dalhousie <laughs> That's the end of day four. We're going to get to bed early and try to get up early to try to catch. Uh, we have to ford that horse crossing at uh, the South Esk River. We want to catch that early before uh, everything starts to pick up in the afternoon from all the melt. So, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the morning. Morning, day five for us. And this is the day. <laughs> That's a gorgeous view to wake up to, my goodness. Let's just hope we don't wake up to it again tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, uh, we're a little later than we thought. I've been sleeping in on this hike, which is unusual for me. Uh, I mean, that's why we took 10 days and not, you know, doubled up and done 20 plus K days, because I just wanted to come out and kind of relax. So we're pretty much packed up and uh, be sad to say goodbye to this view. I mean, hopefully we are saying goodbye to this view. But uh, a couple kilometers to the fire burn, and then we'll see if we can get across the horse trail. If we can't do the ford, then we'll kind of have to pick our way through the hiker trail to the bridge. So uh, it's a short day kilometer-wise, but could end up being rather long, uh, perhaps, getting there. I mean, uh, I expected the trail to be in worse condition than it's been in so far. So, um, you know, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised this morning. Let's let's all cross our fingers. All right, so we're ending the burn area. If you choose this area, reduce your risk, wait for favorable weather. Yeah, well, it's windy as heck today. But 2006, 13 years ago was the fire. So, really, I don't think we'll be having actively falling trees 13 years later. But hey, if I'm wrong, we'll turn around. Let's go find out. Here we go. This is where trail finding is going to be fun, as you can see from the fire and the new growth. Now we know horsemen have come through here, so hopefully they've done a little work. 
along the way. We're just going to try to keep our eyes on this track and hope it doesn't fade too much. We've exited the burn after a couple kilometers. Wasn't that bad, really. Actually has its own unique beauty we were talking about. You know, uh, replenishing the forest. Track's hard to find in a couple places and there's probably a few dozen trees that we hopped over. Yeah, we did hop, I crawled. Crawling, I hopping. <laughs> but we're back on the track in the woods. So, we'll only be just a few minutes before we get to the intersection, I think of the uh, hiker trail and the horse trail. And we're gonna go down the horse trail and have a peek at these fords because uh, that may be our best bet. But let's go find out. Oh my God, oh my God. We just saw, okay, so a deer got it that way and a wolf just went in there. A wolf chasing the deer. <gasps> I'm getting on my bear. Yeah, we just saw a gray wolf. No, no, it's fine, Ev. You don't need your spray, honey. I'm afraid. It's a wolf. All right, we're totally hosed now. We've come out of the woods. Oh my god, that is so cool. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. We have to life. try to find a place to cross this monstrosity here somewhere. Oh, and the I... Deer, the deer wasn't running from us, it was running from the wolf. Correct. <gasps> I don't know how we're getting across this river, Evelyn. If at all. We backtracked and found a different track. If you come down to that river, go back and look left, and you'll see where somebody's cut down some new growth. Always look for little cut stubs, you know, like little stumps that have been sawed off. Because here is the difference between the hiker trail, which is straight ahead, and the horse trail, which is right. And I'm afraid we're gonna have to try the hiker trail and pick our way through the crap because I can't get across that, I don't think. And I'm not sure if he can either. We will take a one last look. But you know, I would recommend at least going near the river, because you never know if you might see a deer <laughs> being hunted by a wolf. I'm yes. literally freaking out. Yes, she is literally freaking like, out. I'm not afraid. I'm just like geeking out, because that is like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. She's definitely... My sister is going to be so oh. mad. See, look, just I didn't want to interrupt you. But look, see that? That's definitely a, a trail marker I of itself. I swear, though, Dad, Olivia's going to be so mad. Yeah, we didn't get it on video, unfortunately. I, I, the GoPro took a couple seconds to get on. And by that time, by that time, the... Uh, Gone Wolf had gone into the scree, and that was pretty much the end of that. But so it was huge. It was a, a big wolf, yep. Wolf. Very big. Like awesome. It was awesome. Alright, we're gonna see if we can pick our way along there on the hiker trail. Keep our fingers crossed. Alright, hikers. <laughs> There's the marker where you go down. We've climbed up the ridge. Beautiful view. We can't see the wolf or the deer anymore. The hunt is probably too far away from us now. There's no way you're getting across that river at that level. So what we're going to have to do now is try to pick our way through uh, on this hiker trail along this ridge and uh, hopefully be able to find the top end of that suspension bridge somewhere but first <laughs> have to find the trail oh boy well we're gonna hike up this ridge and see if we can follow the hiker trail uh hopefully the guy online was just uh you know maybe not interested in route finding but we're, we're gonna do our best and we're hopefully, very interested and then hope the bridge is still there and in good shape <laughs> if not we'll be coming back this way but even if we had to come back this way, just look at this. I mean, just this as a destination is, I mean, well, let me show you. I mean, it's outstanding. Let me just move ahead here. I'm just swing it around for you. You can't get here unless you walk in and it's spectacular. So I haven't really found what I think is the trail down here, but my advice to anybody who's trying to root find when there's no markers, and there are no markers uh, right along here, is forget looking for the track, but try to see where the track might go. And I can see the track going up that ridge. 
So now I gotta find a way to get down this gully and up to that track. That's the next order of business. We are bushwhacking, but this is the trail. I mean, according to my GPS, we're actually on what was the old trail. We've seen a diamond marker. The other direction. Going the... <laughs> I guess we're hiking the wrong way because all the diamond markers seem to be for people heading to Rocky so Pass. You might want to, you know, go a little bit and sure of your way. Yeah, you got to take your time and look around, look ahead. Now, I mean, if we could have crossed down there, and there's no way we could have crossed, we would have come across there and then we would just follow that ridge all the way down that way. It would have been easy walking too. Definitely be following the wolf though. Yeah, we would be over with the wolf. I'm not sure how much more scrambling we're gonna have to do, but hopefully once we get out of this burn, the trail will return back to, uh, to normal, but that may not be till we actually get to the bridge, so stay tuned. Dear Parks Canada, I apologize for that last comment. <laughs> 30 seconds later. 30 seconds later, I see this. Oh, there's hope. So this day that we thought might be a Nero, meaning get into camp maybe early, could be one of our longer ones actually, from an hours on the trail perspective. All right. Looks like somebody flagged that too. Karen? Right there. Yeah, and then somebody flagged this was the knife because that's after the burn, you can tell. So, we're on the way. Showing you where we came from. We actually had to come up along this ridge high and bushwhack because the trail goes to there and then stops. There's a huge shoot, nothing. So we've had to come up and around. And like I've said three times, and now you're watching this in succession, but you just have to look ahead and look for what you think might be the track. And I was able to intersect the track again. I have no idea. Uh, at this moment where this goes as far as uh, having to bushwhack again but uh, at least we're back on the trail fallen trail marker she was of course right here meaning we're on the trail Nice to see these trail markers. Yeah, once you hit the plateau, there seems to be a lot more. Yeah, now that we're up kind of sort of on top. So looking backwards, we've uh, just leaving the park. You can see there are signs here. Now that we've exited the park, we're gonna have to be very mindful of where we're going. I mean, there's another flag up here. And that's what they say in the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide. Hopefully they'll be flagging to guide us through this maze. Cause there's seismic lines. There's a seismic line here and uh, so now a little tricky part. There's your seismic line, folks. Right there. So we're turning left and we walk about 100 meters and then we're supposed to turn right. And there's the flagging. Okay, look at the size of my boot print and I wear like an eight women's. And look at the size of that wolf track. That's a big one. I'm gonna see. It's a good size wolf, yeah. Uh -huh. That wasn't too long ago either. No. Now we've got to find the trail. There's a marker on that tree there's an old an old marker in that tree so we're on the right path next thing i'm going to show you unless there's something a bit confusing is our approach to the bridge and uh while you're watching this cross your fingers for us <laughs> that the bridge is accessible and intact <laughs> it's there it's there now can we get to it that's gonna be interesting Times like this, I wish I could fly. Yeah, just drop yourself down there. Yeah. All right, there's supposed to be some switchbacks that get us down there. There's a patrol cabin over there, you can see. Way off in the distance, the patrol cabin. So uh, whether or not there's a trail or not, we're gonna make our way down there and get to that bridge. Yeah, and get across and have a break. Oh yeah. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Woo! All right. I'm gonna walk across and then film Evelyn coming across. I was gonna try to be quiet during this video, but watching Evelyn come across that. 
no fun for dad. What's she looking at? <laughs> Lordy Lord. Focus on the task at hand. Imagine that, a bridge restricted to a maximum of six people. I had a hard time with one person. I know, right there is the worst part. We had a nice long break here. Big milestone for us. And look at that. Flying Trail Crew 1994. 94? No, 19. I can't tell if that's 94 or 74. Okay, well, that's a big 20 year gap. But those flying trail crews, man, they do some great work out here and they stand the test of time. I mean, look at that thing. Poof. All right, less than a kilometer and a half to camp. Pick our way through the burned forest again, though. It could take us a while. Everyone's standing at a very important sign. I'm going to take a second to tell you what just happened here and what to keep an eye out for. Okay, so we've, uh, we're going this way now. You can see the cut down the south boundary, but we've come from this way. And when you come up from the South Esk Bridge, there's no trail at all. So what you're going to look for is this ridge. There'll be a ridge ahead of you, and you want to just go straight ahead, find your way up to this ridge, and then turn left. Come along for a couple hundred meters, and, uh, oh, there's, oh yeah, okay, I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, a couple hundred meters, and there you go. We're going a kilometer that way to South Esk campsite for tonight, and that's far enough. And down there, through the trees, the warden's cabin. If you're going down to the warden's cabin, you just go down this way. And, uh, Anyway, we're in the home stretch. Kilometer to go. It's hot. And uh, that was pretty tough actually getting up out of there, but I really recommend having a GPS. Otherwise, you could get turned around in that burn pretty good. South Esk. Let's go in and uh, have a look around, set up camp. It's on a little lake, a little sink lake little spur trail here coming into South Esk. Whew. More stuff to grunt your way over. So we'll uh, come in here and set up and once we're set up and ready to go, I'll show you around. There's the bear pole. We're about to walk under it. About to walk under the bear pole. I thought I heard howls. I'm probably just imagining it, but I heard howls before we saw the other one. That's true, you did. There's our view from South S Camp. Wow, another stunner. Gorgeous view of the ranges there. And a uh, very interesting lake. Haven't really seen any fish in it, but uh, the water is absolutely crystal clear. And it's so quiet here. No running water, right? You know, usually you're near a brook, you have all that white noise. All we have out here are the sounds of the animals. And, uh, yeah, camp's a bit of a mess here because we're in the middle of uh, doing multiple things, including back up by the lake, drying in the hot sun, doing some solar charging. Long trips like this, important to keep your batteries up. Decided to put the tent here. Yes, it's near the eating area, but there's nowhere else to go that I could find. A little spot up here would be nice too. Um, and then if you go down the trail, when we walked in, I showed you the bear hang. It's, it's right over the trail, basically. And just go down there, make a right, and you walk up, and it's another one of those log hole toilets. <laughs> so, anyway, that's a view of camp. Uh, pretty simple place, but just gorgeous. But not a lot of room for tents. Um, I mean, you could use all this space for tents, but again, right beside the eating area. So you have to be super careful with your cooking. We tend to use, as you know, dehydrated meals and everything anyway, so, you know, the, the smells are minimal uh, because of that. We're not cooking bacon. <laughs> Although, I, oh God, I wish we were. Although Evelyn's a vegetarian, so that wouldn't work for her. But What a day. Over, a little over 10 kilometers, 10.13, and uh, it was supposed to be nine, or just under nine, and we thought instead of, we thought we'd be here. If it was a perfect trail, it would be two and a half hours for us probably over five, uh, really, I'm exhausted. That's a challenging day. 
Yeah, you really, like, it's not, you're not just walking. You're climbing. Oh. I crawled. I took off my backpack to jump yep. over a tree. Yep. Like, bushwhacked. It's so. It was a tough day. It's like, it's very technical. Yeah, the is what exactly. The, uh, I would call it. The uh, fires here really did some damage. I mean, uh, once we get up on the plateau, after getting our way up. The ridge. Uh, somehow up the ridge. Yeah. However we did that. Uh, the plateau had some nice markings and stuff, but we still hopped, 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 hopped. Seismic lines were fine. That actually was easy to get through the seismic area. I yeah, thought. it's a little tricky. Look for the really old markers. Yeah, because it kind of goes in a weird circle, and you have yeah, to. Yeah, really there's pay lots attention. of new road tracks up there and stuff, but uh, that was cool. Uh, we were pretty excited when we saw the suspension bridge, and still it, there, <laughs> easy, it, and in great shape. Uh, easy to go down, but then when we get down into the South Esk, right around the river where the burn was, we couldn't in any way see, there was no trail. No. So Evan led us down to the river, along the river for a while. We had to hop up back in the woods. We crossed the bridge and... Uh, There's not a board broken on that No, thing. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful shape. Uh, and just what a gorgeous spot. Just a beautiful spot. And we celebrated. Yeah. That was very short-lived because trying to find the trail on the other side of the bridge through those woods was absolutely impossible. It wasn't there. Uh, it wasn't there, and I was just using my GPS to try to point us toward where we would intersect the trail at some point. Go, go to like the middle. Well, so you want to go up the little hill. Like once you get across the bridge, there's go up an the arrow hill. asking you to go straight into the woods, but there's no trail there. Just go up the little hill, and then you'll find. If you turn to the left, you'll you'll know. Yeah. So what I did was I spotted a cut down through um, a hill. That's typically a sign that something goes up there, and uh, we hopped up there, and we were back on the trail. And it was pretty easy to get here actually and uh just a beautiful day uh, weather wise and this is a beautiful campsite so I do have a question for you what was your highlight of the day oh definitely the wolf the wolf for sure yeah we walked down there and you saw we saw deer going by and they were like oh and oh, dad was like oh look a look deer. deer like, like deer. i see deer in my look, wildlife finally instead of a squirrel but and it was um, running like bounding for its life and then and we, were, we were looking at the river and then i went to evelyn and i said Something like, it's a great, look, a gray wolf. And uh, sh this huge wolf. Like, look, it's a wolf. It was big. This was a big, big, like, big animal. You thought it was like up to like a little bit below my hip. I think so. Right? And I'm like yeah. five, four. No, I think so. It's a, it's a, it's a, it was a big animal and that was very exciting. Like really bulky, like a lot bulkier than I thought. Yeah, very, very exciting. Tomorrow, about 13 kilometers. Or so, yeah. Where are we off to? Isaac. Isaac, yep. Isaac. And then the day after that, I think Arret. And then we're back into the Brazo then Brazo, loop. then yeah. Boulder, and then we leave. So uh, hopefully the 13K we do tomorrow will be uh, a lot less technical and challenging and route finding than today. In the Rocky Mountains, like the trail guide book, it says it will be. Yeah, it says it should be flat. Now the trail hasn't been maintained, but still the track will be there. So looking forward to that and making our way back to Brazo. We'll see you in the morning. Day six, and the mosquitoes are lying in wait. Look at that. That's nothing, actually. It was a lot worse a few minutes ago. <laughs> They're everywhere. Whew. And yes, the rain flies on. Excuse me. About 3.30, everyone woke me up and said, Dad, it's raining. And uh, it was sprinkling, so we had to put the fly up. And now I have to go out amongst all of these beasts. Look at them lying in wait for my blood. All right, up and at him and off to Isaac Creek. There's our view again this morning here at South Esk. My goodness, what a quiet place, except for the zillions of mosquitoes that were attracted to our tent. Once you're out of the tent, they're not too bad, but they really like the color of the tent or something, or all of our exhalations, because uh, Evelyn couldn't go to sleep. They were so loud at one point, and they're probably what? How many did you count? Um, when you were asleep, I stayed up because I couldn't fall asleep, and just on the tent or around the tent, I counted like five different times because I wanted to make sure it was accurate, like 53. 53 uh, mosquitoes. mosquitoes, yeah, that's a lot. And then Evelyn saw up in this tree. Oh yeah, okay, so we heard a bunch of really loud squawking. And like screeching, ah, I, I, okay. can't, I can't tell the difference between whether it's like a hawk or an eagle. I thought it was one of those. And so I'm like, dad, do you know what that is? And he's like, never heard that before. I and all of a sudden it flies up there and I hear it up there. And then I hear it again over there. So I look up and there's this like huge bird. 
and I look up and I'm like looking at it and all of a sudden its head like goes like 360 degrees and goes yeah it was a right out. and I'm like and I'm like that's an owl that's an owl and it was like huge and then it I dad looked and then it flew off and its wingspan yeah, it was huge literally was up like to her wrist probably my wrist yeah. honestly like, it was huge insane yeah very very huge so we're so. gonna look up when we get back to civilization well it screeched and so we're guessing was it was it a screech owl we have no idea we don't know we, we have no we're, idea we're gonna look yeah we're gonna look it up so yeah another great night i think remember last night i mentioned in the video that you look for a cut line on a hill if you're trying to find the trail now there's one over there i'm, I'm guessing we're going to go out and swing around and come that way but uh, i could be wrong uh last thing i want to say this morning this is kind of a personal note um what do you think <laughs> Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time looking at trails on maps. You know, I sit at home, I look at maps, and I wonder, gee, I wonder what it's like out there. You look at these little lines on the map of like the south boundary and the north boundary trail, which are my bucket list trails. And uh, to be out here now, walking those little lines on the map is pretty cool. You know, really, it really, really is. And, and so far, spectacular, really worth every minute of struggle that we had yesterday and the day before trying to get where we needed to go. It's just uh, the, uh, the sense of isolation is uh, unparalleled for me in hiking, really, so we far. Seen another person in six days. Yeah, so we may go a week or more without seeing people till we get to the Brazo area. So fortunately, we've not run out of things to talk about yet. No, it's gonna happen today, I swear. <laughs> I've talked about everything under the sun. He won't talk. He's just like, oh, talk to me. Yeah, I like listening, so. Anyway, but as we get packed up, just take a second and listen to this. A little tricky here, trying to find the way to go. Here's a sign. Oh. So Dowling Ford, that way. South Esk River, that way. Isaac Creek, that way. I don't see that way, so when you get to this sign, stop and have a look around so we can see, you can see where we're supposed to go. We've climbed up out of the meadows, otherwise known as Mosquitoville. And if it tracks like this most of the day, I'd be a pretty happy guy. You know, we've hopped over some trees, but so what? That's always the case in any park. But a uh, big milestone, yep, turn south. Nigel, oh, Nigel, here we come. Yes, it's raining. We stopped and got our gear on. This is on forecast. I mean, I use the Garmin inReach and I pay for the, whatever plan gives you the weather, <laughs> premium weather. And uh, gee whiz. It's supposed to be sunny and 16 Celsius today and the usual 10% chance of rain that uh, Garmin seems to put on every single day no matter what. I'm honestly, I've never seen a 0% chance, at least not out here in the mountains, but well, rain or not, that is one beautiful view. Well, there goes our big wildlife sighting this morning, a toad. <laughs> I gasped like I'd seen like a bear or something, but see you later, buddy. We're not gonna bother you. Yeah, there's smaller ones over here. So yeah. watch see you later. Okay. Stopped here under a tree. It is soaking wet. I mean, it's not raining too too hard, but it's raining steady. Um, I pulled the weather forecast down this morning, and this this wasn't on it, as I said a minute ago. But well, it's tough because you're wet on the outside, and you start sweating inside and then you get cold when you stop because you're wet on the inside from sweat. So it's tough on these days to regulate your body temperature, but it's pretty important to try to do it. So we're gonna hide under this tree for a few minutes and have a break and then uh, no choice but to keep going. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. <laughs> oh. Fun times. I'm singing in the rain. Dad. Well, Evie just spotted that. If anybody knows what that is, because I don't, please go ahead and post it in the comments section below. Eggs, 
Barf. Eggs, barf. We don't know what that is, but. Help. All I know is I want to keep going. Yeah, we're making really good progress. We've gone like an hour and a half and we're almost on 6K. Yeah, we're at 6K at about an hour and 40 minutes, which is a good fast pace for us. The thing is, you can't stop or else the mosquitoes will eat you alive. Yeah, that's the motivation, right? So in this section of the valley, when you stop, uh, you're swarmed by honestly dozens of mosquitoes. So that's why we're motivated <laughs> to keep moving. Whatever it takes, right? We're about eight, uh, eight and a half, no, about eight and a quarter kilometers from camp. And the last half a kilometer has been all like this. So just expect that. Uh, this whole section has been basically one big blowdown. Hopefully it's just in one small area and we'll clear it because it's really slowed us down. But uh, just be aware, eight and a quarter kilometers from camp, from South Esk, we've uh, run into a long stretch of, of down trees on the trail. Where? Right there, it just flew by. It just went right there and flew by. Look, it's right there. Or a hawk. Look at how fast. We've come out on the river flats, Isaac Creek. Someone's been kind enough to put up a cairn. AKA Bear Central. Yes, yes, lots of reports of bears around here over the years. That's okay. Uh, we don't care. We don't care. We don't see anything on these river flats either. So we're gonna look for some more cairns, get across the river, because we have to cross. And uh, I've actually been using the UTM coordinates of the campsites. Ooh, the UTM coordinates are provided by Parks Canada on the brochure for this hike and many other hikes. If you use the UTM coordinates, they're pretty accurate and you shouldn't get lost. So I've got the UTM of this campsite on my Gaia GPS and if I get off trail a little bit here, I know which direction to point myself in to get to the campsite. Because other than that cairn, I don't see any more. So, all right, we're gonna pick our way to the river and cross. And we'll show you that when we get there. But how about this view? Not bad at all. My UTM coordinates tell me we're over there for camp. There are no markers going in this direction. Yeah, yeah. come straight toward me. Yeah. It's fast in the middle, so watch your step. So what we've done is we come down a little further downstream to where it breaks up here. There's a sandbar I walked out onto there. And if she can get past this first little deep spot, there's a sandbar here and then we're home clear. So using a GPS out here is really helpful. Uh, simply because like, in our direction, uh, we couldn't find any markers or cairns or anything on this side of the river to give us a guide. So I'm just walking basically straight toward that point on the map, which so far has been accurate to with about 20 meters. Highly recommended. All right, I gotta turn, I, I don't wanna turn around and watch this, but I have to. <laughs> oh, being a dad out in the trail. Whew. I'll tell you what though, this kid, this kid's hard. She's tough. She really is. Uh, heavy if you hear this. Darn proud of you, sweetie, really. I stand corrected. There is a yellow marker. We just couldn't see it from way back there, so. But also, right in the direction of where I was tracking with the, uh, campsite location so there is a yellow marker Com well, yeah, the there's the trail I guess you were supposed to go in over there. well whatever all right all right let's get into camp and hope the sun comes out because it's been a really mixed day of rain and sun and wind and everything we're hopefully gonna have a campfire tonight warm up and dry some stuff off last horse hiker camp we've been into there was some nice wood all bucked up Hmm, I wonder if we'll be lucky this time. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy these wildflowers. This is beautiful. Very nice. Oh, well hang on folks. This is camp. <laughs> Isaac Creek! Yeah, we made it. Right there. There's the horse stuff. Good. 
So we're, we're going to go. 16K. It's not 16K to a wreck. Okay. If it is, folks, I'll come back and tell you in a minute. But uh, what a gorgeous little spot. It up on the screen. What a gorgeous little spot with these wildflowers. Oh my gosh. Oh, Beautiful. Amazing. As you can see, we're preparing for a fire. <laughs> I went and collected that all amongst that deadfall over there. And those branches just snapped off like nothing. So they're going to be super dry. Uh, typical firing at the horse sites like we've seen on this trail so far over there. This is cool. This was built a long time ago with uh, cement and some rocks. And they put that together to, uh, I guess, make a, a really cool fire pit. So uh, horse pens are over there, of course. Lots of places to tie up uh, the horses, which helps us because we have places then to hang stuff and all that sort of thing. Uh, the privy's back in there. There is a sign shoot through there. You can see privy. Uh, it's one of the green ones, just like at the other horse camp, not one of the hole slash um hole slash pole or whatever you want to call it log so yeah privy's over here as is the pole for the bear hang bring rope i don't know if you can see it but privy's right through there and it's over there so um we've decided to tuck out here in the wildflowers now we did not set up on wildflowers evelyn would not let us and i wouldn't have done it anyway because i think they're pretty and stuff so we've tried to find a place with low impact here um, but look at this look at this i mean look at this meadow here that we're in <clears throat> just spectacular wildflowers a huge assortment of wildflowers just very very pretty of course we come in from over there beautiful views of tarpine rock which i'll show you in a minute and then the trail actually goes off that way not that way it's tricky see look you look down there you think oh that's the trail that's not the trail that's the trail so uh that's camp here at isaac uh a nice spot i really like it i think i've liked every campsite on this trail so far um lagrasse was my least simply because it's right you're right in the middle of the trail when you set up but this is gorgeous uh, let me take you out to the creek isaac creek and show you the view as promised a little view this is the uh this is Isaac Creek that we forded. Water levels, I, you know what, never done the trail before, but seems like they're going pretty good. It was a fun little ford. We come from down there. There is a trail marker down there if you're going the opposite direction. So just, well, I can actually see it. You'll never see it on video, but it's right that way, right there, I can see it. And then of course on this side, it's right there. And I couldn't see it because of this growth that has started to happen uh, along the banks of Isaac Creek. Just a gorgeous view though, look at that. Stunning. And there's, uh, I think it's around 1,300 meters, Tarpian Rock. That's, uh, wow, huh? Really? So after a day of walking in the woods, we're in camp and there it is. Just a stunning, stunning trail so far. Really, very impressed uh, with everything it offers. All right, there's your tour. And your trip planning. Now you know what Isaac Creek looks like. Beautiful little spot with the wildflowers. Dinner time for us. And I'm hungry. <laughs> Step back here. What a lovely fire Evelyn has built. And we needed it because we've had uh, some sketchy weather today. Had a lot of rain earlier and it was cold and windy. Now we've got a mix of sun and clouds and a little bit of spitting rain and some cold wind. And well, that's, uh, that's the Rockies in July. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. It could, it could snow. You don't know. But look at our view. We're sitting here having dinner on the edge of a very small, gorgeous wildflower meadow. I mean, this is fantastic. No, we don't have a view of Tarpian Rock. It's over there, but, but look at that. Gorgeous. Uh, about what, 12 and a half kilometers today? Yeah. And about 14 tomorrow to Aret. If I'm saying that incorrectly, please correct me. I don't mind. Just leave a note down below. And then after that, we make our way up to, uh, well, back to Brazo and uh more folks and our what another people eight days of solitude yeah. will be uh will be over and we'll meet some other hikers and... i don't mind well i don't mind either no but we haven't run out of things to talk to yet nah. evelyn's working on trying to pick a university oh God, it's Been so hard put in a bunch of applications so we're just kind of chatting about that on the trail so there's always something to talk about but uh, anyway it's a good day really good day and uh, we're going to enjoy our dinner in this gorgeous fire and this beautiful wildflower meadow behind me. So, we'll see you in the morning.
Day seven. Whole week in the bush. And our tour of Mosquitoville continues. <laughs> Ever since we got to South Esk campsite, it's been Mosquitoville. Look at that. Good morning, fellas. You gonna hike the 14K with us today to, uh... All right. Look at these guys. Really good sleep last night. Nice and quiet. Good temperature. So, it's also day seven of the South Boundary Beard. <laughs> How'd you sleep, Ev? Well, good. Excellent. All right. Well, up and at him. Off to uh, Arat. On our way to Arat, to a beautiful wildflower meadow we had our view of last night. Little last shot of camp. I like this camp. What'd you think, Ev? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it was good. Really pretty little campsite. There's a trail there. Yeah, yeah it's pointing. I think it's right there. This looks like the trail to me. A little counterintuitive when you come out of here, but I think there used to be a bypass of this. At least it's showing me one on the map, an old map. But uh, now we have to kind of cut back out from here and then turn kind of left. So, underway. I've never seen that before. Just the bark chunks falling down off a tree like that. Pretty interesting. You said it's more up here? Yeah, another tree here. And the bark chunks just fall off. Back there, it almost looked like, you know, scree. So, whoo, we're off to a buggy start. Worked our way up the ridge. That's more like it. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, yeah, there's more to come. <laughs> no, but this is a nice section and once you've bashed your way through some willows and hopped over, you know, a dozen trees in a kilometer, this is a lovely break and welcome. So it changes quite a bit out here, that's for sure. Speaking of trees. Here's the split between uh, Isaac and Arette. The uh, horse goes that way, hiker goes this way. We're gonna actually have a look at this hiker trail and see if it's... I have hundreds of mosquitoes. Yeah, you're totally covered, but look at you, are surrounded by mosquitoes. Are you holding your breath? Mm. Very, very buggy. <laughs> oh my god. It's insane. This is like, oh my god. Okay, so we did take the hiker trail back at the intersection. Take it, it's great. Take it, it's really great. Uh, easy to follow. Oh, and by the way, there's some water out here flowing. Really smells of sulfur. Rotten eggs. Rotten eggs, yeah. So, all right, we're back on the trail proper. Almost a 10K mark for us. So I counted 14K-ish from the campsite and the sign said 16. So let's see. About a kilometer from camp. Unfortunately for us, Gaia did one of those weird triangular issues today and added some kilometers to our track, which is not accurate. Um, I'm going to share this track online with uh, with you. I'll have links down below because, uh, you know, if you do come out to hike this, it might be helpful. So I'm mentioning that now because I want you to ignore those weird looking triangles. Yeah, when those have actually happened, they've been in a place where the trail is like yeah, I think, dead easy to find. I think we're losing GPS at some point. It's, it's tracking or walking onto something else. I don't know. But a couple times on this trail so far. We wave to the wildlife camera. We always, always see these things. Hello. Hello. I'm going to video the camera as it takes a picture of me. Say cheese. 
Jeez. <laughs> you can we tell you're not Jasper. far. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What were we saying? Say, we, love you, we do love you, Jasper. We love you very much. Um, you so much listen, I think we must be close to the warden's cabin then because... Right there. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was going to say, we must be close to the warden's cabin because I don't see them coming out too far. Let's have a look around here. Oh, they always get so cute. It's so pretty. Yeah, they, oh, warden. I want to be a warden. Oh, if you're watching this from Jasper, I'd love to be a warden in a couple Hi, summers. I'm, um, I have a lot of history on the trails. I'm young and I will totally work for you for like <laughs> a, very little money. Exactly. I will volunteer. Actually, no money. I'll just, I'll just hop on a horse. Holy mackerel. Look at the wood all bucked up in there. Wow. Someone's Almost there. makes me want to stay here. Put my tent right there. There's even more wood over on there. Gorgeous. You know, we had a GoPro malfunction in the sawback last year and I didn't get on video the warden's cabin. How did I think of Flint's the warden's cabin? But look at that view. This you know, I think one. theoretically in a wildlands trail, we could camp here on the grounds if we wanted to. Uh, we're not going to, we'll go to the campsite, but, but look at that view, my gosh. And a beautiful breeze to keep the mosquitoes away. Wardens know how to pick a place, don't they? They really do. Hats off to Jasper, they have the Look at this. All right. I, have got, I still have no idea if I'm saying that right. We're so sorry, everyone. Yep, sorry, correct me. Just left the warden's cabin and somebody's been out here. I mean, there's lots of horse tracks that are dried up, but look at this. That's fresh trail work. So we knew there was a trail crew coming out to Brazo because of a lot of trees that were down. They may have come out maybe from Brazo to here, but that was definitely fresh trail work. We appreciate you so much. We do appreciate it, yeah, absolutely. So, all right, a little further to the campsite. I just wanted to show you that. You don't often see fresh trail work way back here. And here we are. So, <laughs> so at Isaac Creek, it says 16. This says 17. It's, folks, it's 14. Brazo River, 10. I'll tell you that later when I look. But uh, we're here. It's 14. Don't plan for it a... It is 14. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah. plan for a 17-pounder. No. So let's go have a look at camp and uh, once we get set up as usual, I'll show you around. Ooh, look, very important sign, privy. As promised, a little tour of camp starting with the privy. And the reason I'm starting with the privy is because it took me it's so far away from camp. This is the one that's the furthest away, hasn't been used in forever. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with the walk back because it's probably probably 100 meters and a lot of deadfall on the little path back here. So not easy to get to uh, because of all that. All right, that took a little bit of effort back into camp. It's interesting over here. Okay, look, what's going on here, do you think? Interesting. Hmm. I'll put our tent there. There really wasn't... Great spots elsewhere, some dead trees, some weird stuff on the ground. We'll have our meal over here. As I said, we don't cook, so some deadfall we've uh, collected in case we want to have a fire. Drying some clothes as usual, and then down there, the mighty Brazo River. And you won't see this in the video, but it's moving, man. There's a lot of water out here right now, and we head up the valley here of the Brazo. Uh, that's a ret up there, that peak. And a nice spot, nice spot. I uh, wish it was slightly closer to the river, but hey, the cool thing is there is a little stream down here as a water source. You don't have to go all the way down uh, if you don't want to. Bear hang whoop, way up there. Hope you're a good thrower. Day seven's in the books. Uh, pretty uneventful walk, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the first half a kilometer or a kilometer out of camp was brutal. Trees down everywhere willows but after that it's actually a pretty easy walk i mean we booked it we did our i won't say what our speed was because uh i'm not sure exactly but that's our fastest day on this trail so far was today like as far as our pace is concerned uh so 14 kilometers from uh isaac to arete and uh tomorrow is 12.7 kilometers to brazo and uh that's where we join the, the gang and uh hike our way toward nigel when we did Brazo last year, we didn't stop at this campsite by this, that crazy bridge, that 
feet of engineering is where this campsite is. I'll show you that tomorrow. Uh, we actually hiked up to the lake, but uh, no need to do that now. We've been there, so we'll we'll try this place out and keep moving forward. Uh, buggy though, wasn't it today? Buggy, oh buggy, buggy, buggy. We, I tried to show you on the video. I don't know how it turned out, but it was buggy. It's the most amount of mosquitoes we've ever been around. I've never seen that many in my he life. You grew up in the woods. And I grew up in the woods. <laughs> So, I've seen that many black flies. Yeah. But I've never like seen that St. many. John has, that's right. Like yeah. I, where we grew, I grew up near St. John, New Brunswick, and I, I mean, I've seen black flies that were swarming, but oh, those and they make the sound of, and and when they all get together and there's like a hundred of them around you, it sounds like some sort of An droning airplane. airplane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! So I'm glad that's over. Hopefully tomorrow won't be quite as bad. But this actually, this section's typically quite. Um, like in the Brazo, as you're following the Brazo River up toward Nigel's, can typically be quite buggy. In fact, our last night on the trail um, at Boulder, I think that's got a reputation for being rather uh, buggy. So, but you know, we're fine. Nice fire, nice mid dinner, and now we're just going to chill and enjoy the rest of this day and this uh, beautiful sounds of the Brazo River just off to my left. And we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day eight on the South Boundary Trail. Woohoo! There's Evie cleaning up, lots of condensation on the tent. Draining the rain flies wet over there, it's drying it off. Getting our breakfast ready. Uh, pretty cold night, actually. Holy moly. Uh, it was cold. Oh, by the way, yes, day eight of the South Boundary Beard. <laughs> yeah, it was a cold night. I was a little chilly. I didn't really dress properly because it was warm when we went to sleep, but. Uh, Cool night, not a cloud barely in the sky. Well, not a cloud in the sky at all, actually. So uh, 12 and change to Brazo, and then we rejoin the group, the gang, everybody hiking the Brazo loop. And uh, that's a big milestone for us too, because technically we're still on the south boundary till we exit, but you know, mentally you're like, okay, well, the south boundary's kind of done here, because now we're on Brazo, but been a great hike so far and looking forward to another great day. Oh, one last look. Bye bye. It says Brazo River, 10 kilometers, but we know it's longer than that. As we mentioned last night, the signs are never really right. Don't go by them. You can tell you're getting close to Brazo. Oh, look, a bridge. <laughs> it's a real bridge. Oh, I think it was built in 94. Yeah, 94. They had a lot of flying trail crews come out in 94 and do a lot of work. I think, you know, I speculated about the South Esk suspension bridge but I couldn't tell if it's in 94 or 74 I'm I'm betting it's 94 but that's still 20 20 Come on, Dad, you can do it. 25 years ago holy crap sure oh. Oh. anyway it's time for a new flying trail crew I'd say come on in fellas I'll volunteer Maybe time to get a little wet. Scenery starting to open up for us, as I showed you, real nice as we head back into the heart of the Brazo. <laughs> you okay there, kiddo? Yeah, whatever. That'd be a funny place to fall after everything you've done. All right, we're gonna head across. Trail's down the left, I think. I think it's down there. Wow, Brazo, we have come up and this is what we're looking at now after a couple days of being in the woods. Let me just show you this, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing, hey Ev? Yeah. Gorgeous. Just looking to see if we can see a moose. Yeah, we're looking down to see if we can see any kind of wildlife. But... Wow, 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 wow. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, we knew there was a trail crew out here or a warden, and I think they lost their sunglasses. We'll actually take those back to the trail office. Yeah, but you might as well wear them and take good care of them so they don't get crushed. Okay. And uh, we'll take those to the trail office in Jasper when we file our report, because uh, I wouldn't be surprised if those were from a trail crew or a warden, because uh, <laughs> there's nobody else out here. Wow. You know, that's the third set of glasses we found on this hike. I found a pair of work glasses and I found a pair of lenses. Nice. Look like a warden. You look like a warden. That's great. Oh, oh the future, Evie. Put them no. on. Ah. Freshest bear scat we've seen in uh, eight days. Yeah, what do you think? I think it's uh, probably this morning. But, you know, I always guess it's very, very fresh. Come back and play. Oh yeah, no. Yes. That one's nuts. Well, I just, I want it to be like really far away. Yeah, that's not on this trail, sweetie. Look ahead of you. There's no way you want a bear on this trail. But you know, I'm also, when I'm yelling to mountain play, I'm also saying, Scaring the bear away. Go away. Exactly. Lots of fresh poop. Are we now holding the wall already? I can't say that for sure, but look at that. Oh, this is so refreshing. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, come over here, Dad. Okay. There. I'm going to come over here in the water and step gently. Look at that going down there. And then see if I can show you right here. <laughs> Wow. Wow, huh? Yeah, it's so cool. Beautiful and cool. Like cool as in temperature. Have a look at that for a minute. We've come to the second one. So yeah, this has got to be Big Springs hole in the wall. I'll try to get you a shot of this one. It's like a water park. It's Once like I get through here. It's literally like a water park. Yeah, it's amazing. You look down here. Look at it going. Wow. All right, stay with us here. We're going to walk up and try to show you these falls. Ow. I mean, so you can kind of look up through there and see them. Up through there. And then there is another one up here. Yep. Wow. Why? Something comes directly in the rock. Right, there's what? springs, right? Yeah, that is Yeah, so cool. there's a hole in the wall there, springs bubbling up from the rocks. My goodness. I've never <laughs> seen anything like this. Oh. I'm gonna say it. Don't say it. I'm gonna say it. What is it? This is why you hike. Yeah, I this is why you hike. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Another one up there. You won't be able to see it, but. <laughs> All right. It's like we intersect the hub of the highway. Fantastic. Keep an eye out for this split. I don't know if horses still go there or not. I guess we'll have a look. They do. Okay, fresh tracks, fine. Hiker trails this way, bear right. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be crossing that. <laughs> Not with a 3K left to camp, so. Looks like a, I'm gonna say a bighorn sheep. Oh my God. Became a big meal. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, a while ago, of course, but uh, wow. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, more. There's the upper jaw over there. Oh. Or though that's, maybe that's the lower jaw. I don't know. Probably the lower jaw. Yeah, let's keep moving. Now, that was a while ago. We always watch out for stuff like that on the trail because you don't want to be around something fresher. But that was a long time ago. 
Hiker trail uh, from the split, not as good as the horse trail, which has received some recent maintenance. Somebody was out to a rent recently. Got your glasses, buddy. Yeah. Uh, bring them back. Bringing them back. But uh, yeah, so this trail not nearly as good as the horse trail. Could use a little love. Put another one of these fire danger signs from an old burn. So, I actually wasn't expecting this. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. yeah, so you just have to keep an eye open. Now, we know that there's been trail crew warden, somebody's been through here to a rat because they've done a lot of work. So, hopefully, the path will be easy to uh, see through here, unlike earlier in the video, <laughs> which was pretty awful. Oh, yeah, look, you can see fresh, uh, this is fresh, fresh cutting and stuff. So, nice. That really, uh, that's helping us here. As I said earlier too, we knew there was a crew on the Brazo Loop on the hike we're doing tomorrow. There were a lot of trees down apparently, but uh, they must have come on out this way to a wreck as well. Fires are uh, a mixed blessing, right? Regenerating the forest and all that. But I must say the scenery when you go through the burns is uh, its very interesting. Noticing a lot of this as we get closer to Brazo, all of this, these old trees nailed to the trees, uh, <laughs> making a fence. First, I thought it was a hitching post, but I mean, it goes on for a long time. Very weird. If anybody knows what these are, let us know, because uh, yeah, look, that's all, of course, deliberate. Should be approaching the Brazo Borden's cabin here shortly and then not too much further to the campsite for tonight. Walking into the grounds of the Brazo Warden's cabin. Now we can see what some of this was for. They must have let their, uh, they must have let their horses run a while, quite a ways in the old, back in the old days. Yeah, 300 meters or so for us to camp now. And, uh, I'm going to show you this warden's cabin once we get to it, through this beautiful meadow. They know how to pick them. Ha ha ha, we always say that, I know. No, they do know how to pick them. They have a yard. Yep, they even have a yard. <laughs> Fun. We won't go in the yard, because we have to go to the camp. There it is, Brazo. Communications. All, the, all of them have that. Outhouses at the back. It's probably a tack shed for the horses. And really a nice. flagpole. They have a well. That looks like a well. Pump well. That's so cool. That's nice. I've never look, even seen one of those. Look at this. Imagine being here at night. Just looking out at that. Wow. All Please right, let's, hire me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> let's go up to this sign. All right. We've been to all those. Yeah. Brazo River. That way. Lead it, Ev. This water comes out of the Brazo Lake. And if you can see up over Evelyn's left shoulder, there's the bridge, a real feat of engineering that we were on last year when we did the Brazo Loop. This was a real milestone for me. Last year we sat here and we filled some water. We had a two and a half K or whatever it is up to the lake, two K up to the lake. And I saw this and then I come over here and I saw this sign, South Boundary Trail. And I was like, oh man, what a dream that is. <laughs> a year later and we've, well, we're pretty close to finishing it. Let's get across that bridge and into camp. And we'll show you around. Brazo. Don't really want to put the extra 2K on today to go to the lake. We've been there. Don't want the extra 2K tomorrow. But this uh, bridge is just a ridiculous speed of engineering. It really, really is. Look at that. There are picnic benches? Yeah. Don't you remember doing the Brazo loop? <laughs> Okay, so we're here now at Brazo River. Uh, have never stayed here, yes. There are picnic benches, 
There's a fire pit, there'll be a privy, and there'll be this. Look, bear hangs. So, a lot less work for us tonight. 93 and 99. 93 and 99 for the trail crews on these benches, yeah? Look at that. All right, we're gonna go find a tent pad, and once we're done, I'll show you around. Little shot of camp, we uh, took spot number four. Little stream over here where everybody gets their water, so if there are those here tonight, they will be filing past us, and that's okay. Not a problem. I like this tent pad, a little more secluded for us, and uh, after eight days alone... Oh my gosh, we should tell them what we Well, heard. we'll tell you. Yeah, we, we finally heard some people today. We'll tell you about that after, once I give you the tour, but... Uh, quickly show you these other tent pads. This is number three. <laughs> Sorry. Number two. And wait for it. The number one tent pad at Brazo River is... Doo -doo -doo. Back in there. All right. You saw us walk in up here. A couple of different fire pits. One here, one over there. Community tables, which is pretty normal out here. And I gotta tell you, after eight days uh, out in the middle of nowhere, alone, just having something to sit on like that is a absolute luxury. Bear hangs are there over by the trail. Bridge, by the way, that we come in on is just right over there. Brazo Lake access is up that way. And then the privies down here. I'm gonna guess and say that it's not a pole and a hole, but one of those green Parks Canada sort of, I don't even know what to call them, pods. That was a bit of a ways, which is usually the case. And uh, there it is. Kind of weird they turn it this way. Often they'll turn it with your back to the to the entrance. But uh, whatever. Looks like maybe that was the old one over there. So, all right. There's your tour of Brazo River. We're gonna set up camp. We've already had our little snack of uh, stovetop stuffing. And then we're just gonna relax, plot tomorrow, and then have dinner. That's a wrap on day eight on the South Boundary Trail. Wow, good day, huh? What was the highlight for you today? Um, probably the hole in the wall. Hole in the wall, Big Springs. They were, that was spectacular. Very, very spectacular and a real highlight to the day. Some great views though, up the, up the Brazo River. Mm -hmm. Yeah, into the meadows there. So that was nice too. We do 12.7 kilometers today? 12.7 kilometers today. You're my brain now because I've been out yeah. here. I've been out here just far too long. Uh, tomorrow's our longest day of the hike. 17.2 uh, kilometers to Boulder. And then up over Nigel to uh, the pass. And it's then the down to day. the car the day after. So yes, Boulder, our last night, uh, our last night out. Tomorrow night. So we're going to get up early. I'm setting the alarm. And uh, we'll see you then. Well darn, longest day of the hike, kilometer wise, and uh, it's raining. Hmm, that's too bad. Excuse me. Good morning. Day nine. And it looks like a wet one. So. Uh, Pitch the idea of eating a pro bar instead of cooking. Just getting out of here. No point in lingering when it's this wet. So 17.2 kilometers to Boulder Creek. And uh, tomorrow out. So under this. Uh, this and uh, get up and at him. Soggy start to day nine, but we're off. Expecting this trail to be pretty well maintained since it's uh, probably the second busiest trail in Jasper National Park's backcountry area. Well, you can see why I look a bridge. Careful, Ed, this might be slippery. Okay. And a couple of really nice sisters in camp. If you see this, it was awesome meeting you. Really enjoyed hearing your hiking stories. And some of the accomplishments you've done, pretty cool. Hopefully we can accomplish this 17.2K uh, today in a blink of an eye. That's the idea. If we could get this rain to let up, 
That would be even better. Up and over that first ridge, which was a nice way to get warmed up. <laughs> and here we are. Coming down the Brazo now, or up the Brazo, pardon me. I see some other hikers. Something we haven't seen much of. Used to be a bridge up here where you'd go across, but no more. Horses still ford, hikers don't. So, almost to that split. Yes, indeed, there's the old bridge. Showed you that last year. We were here in the Brazo Loop. Another perspective heading the other way as we start to exit the south boundary. Opening up to some views now. Try to show you a little bit of this trail. I mean, when you open up to these meadows, it's gorgeous. Otherwise, just a lot of woods walking like we've done already over the last few days. But there's a view. I'll take that, eh? Hey? That nice? Yeah. Heavy and I are just talking about how much more snow we see this year. We were out here pretty much the exact same time last year hiking the Brazo Loop and the Sawback Circuit. And I don't remember seeing this much snow. I mean, the weather's unpredictable. Yep, so. unpredictable. Probably explains why the water levels were a bit high. But uh, that's beautiful. I'd say we're approaching the halfway mark of our day. Make an excellent time. On days like this, you pick milestones. Someone carved a hiker into that moose antler. <laughs> That's the intersection. Hiker horse. Obviously, we've come from the hiker trail. Horses go that way. Now we all join together and go this way. And we're going to sit here and take a break along the beautiful Brazo. And, uh, yeah. A little break and then off to our next milestone, which is Four Point. Which is, what, like five? I don't think it's that far. Four? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have to look at my map. But when you do, yeah, I gotta say, when you do days like this, hey, how are you? Get this adjusted a little. Ah, okay. Uh, when you do days like this, you just pick milestones because it's really kind of an unremarkable walk. Yeah, I mean, the old man's struggling. Oh, well, Dad's a little tired today, yeah, but uh, only because I've just got nothing to see. But, and we uh, had no coffee. I'm, I'm out of coffee. All right, pro bar. Finished our break. You can see the uh, other hiker bridge here that's still intact. It's the one that they lost down the way that uh, caused the issues. They decided to uh, just keep everybody on this side of the, of the Brazo. So we're heading that way. Oh, now we're talking. There's a view. Look at that. Nice. Very nice. Really helps. See, look at that. She's running. Now, views really help keep you motivated. We think this might be our last warden's cabin, four point. We saw this last year when we hiked the Brazo Loop counterclockwise. <sighs> oh, look at that. Look what they've done here around the storage shed, the tack shed. That, my friends, is an electric fence. Oh, bears like to have fun around here. Bears do like to have fun. It looks like they've ripped the crap out of that a few times. They're powerful animals. There's the picture. Now I think I have a picture of you and your sister, Ev, right here. Yeah. Looking down that valley. If I do, I'm gonna flash it on the screen from a year ago. Uh, 
and as we've said on every opportunity, what do we always say? About the warden's cabins. Oh, they get that. They the look at that. That's yeah. Sit on the porch and look at that. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna stop at Four Point for our last break, and uh, then off to Boulder Creek. I think. never have to walk into a campsite again. And then tonight's the last night for the campsites for you, yeah? On this trail? Yes, on this trail. Intersection. Intersection here, where you would be going up there, south boundary, we were coming from. We just stopped Brazo River. Uh, anyway, this is the intersection here. Oh, this is so familiar. Reminiscent, huh, from last year? Oh. It's exactly a year ago, pretty much. And uh, this takes you up to Jonah's Shoulder, Jonah's Pass, which may be one of the most spectacular mountain passes I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, for sure. By, you know, amazing, amazing. So now we're just gonna wander up here shortly to Four Point and drop these and have a quick break and then try to find out who's right. The sign up here or the Nat Geo map. Well, here it is, four point. Over to my right as I walk. Some folks already in there setting up. So, we're going to go up to the sign and drop our packs and uh, reminisce about our time here at four point last year. I dropped my coat in there. There it is, four point. And see, bit, the, through there they've changed these out to bear bins. These are now bear boxes, they are not hanging poles anymore. I see. That's new this year. We're going to Boulder Creek. It says three here. Either way, that's good by us. Nice little break, reminiscing at four point. Now we're gonna see who's right. Nat Geo at 2.7 kilometers, or that sign at three. Either way, it doesn't matter. 2.6, oh, okay. Well, whatever. I would think this bridge is probably scheduled for a little repair. Although you could get across here if you had to. This is one section where you could cross without the bridge. Although I wouldn't want to at this point in the day. Nice view upstream. Really nice view downstream. All right, back over here and up this hill and hopefully not too much further to our campsite. Walking into Boulder, there's the bear hangs here, but they have installed these new bear boxes over here, which we're gonna go over to because we're gonna get our food stuffs out and put them here. Then go find a tent pad. Snack time. Mashed potato day. Heavy's finishing them up. And uh, just, I already showed you as we came in, but hello fella. Look at this guy down here. He wants food. Look at him. Yeah, just hanging around, waiting for some scraps. Saw one of those up at the top of uh, Pabokton last year too. Waiting around looking for crumbs after a snack. So. It is chilly. Very, very chilly. Anyway, eating area, as I showed you before, the new bear bins, they've just come in this year. And of course the old bear hangs over there. Walk you up this way. We just came from the eating area. The privy is down that way. And then the tent area is in here. And there's some other guys that come in just a few minutes ago and they're set up down there. Our tent pads tucked around the corner right by the trail. So we have an early easy escape in the morning. Unless I've missed it, water uh, seems to be a little bit far away here. You have to go down the trail a bit and then down to the river. There might be a way to sneak down through here, but I didn't bother. So 
There's your tour of our last campsite on the South Boundary Trail. Well, that's the end of day nine. 18 and a half kilometers. It ended up being. Which is uh, a lot further than 17.2 National Geographic. So uh, National Geographic did really well on the South Boundary proper, but once we entered Brazo, not so much. Uh, it was a long, long walk after... Yeah, three and a half from Four Point to Boulder. Yeah, three and a half from Just Four Point to know. Boulder, not three. Um, and not 2.6. And not easy, that little hike between Boulder well, and... Well, we were exhausted. Four he point. was exhausted. I was. Uh, tomorrow, just 10K to the car and the end of the <laughs> south boundary. Oh. so excited. Listen, I do want to say, I'll try to remember to say it again tomorrow, but just in case I forget, you don't have to do it in 10 days. You, there's a bunch of days there you could put together and do it in less. Although, if you're going to do a trail like the south boundary... Try to make the time to enjoy it and try to hit every campsite because they're all spectacular campsites except, you know, maybe La Grasse, which just really wasn't my favorite. Just but great. all of them are kind of great. Yeah, really great campsites and a really great trail. So uh, now we're looking forward to getting back up over Nigel tomorrow. And uh, we've seen that twice now already in our lives uh, doing Brazo. So that'll be nice to see that. And uh, met some really nice folks in camp tonight. Really uh, fun people, which after... Poor Evie, after seven and a half, almost eight full days with just Dad. Uh, I'm an extrovert. Really enjoyed talking I, to other yeah. people. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it was a good day and we're tired. And we're glad to be here. Up and early tomorrow morning because we're going to get to the car and we have to drive all the way around, past Hinton and down to pick up the other vehicle. So even though it's only 10K, it's still going to be a pretty busy day for us. But I'm going to be sitting for yes. all of it <laughs> except the 10k but i could walk 10k like in the grave yeah so. yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good morning so we'll see you then well good morning it is day 10 of the south boundary trail about 7 30. too early for this ha <laughs> ha yeah, a little uh, hike up Nigel will get you awake. Then pretty much downhill to the car. But what a morning, look at that. Wow. Gorgeous day for hiking, nice and cool. 10K to the car. Wow. Well, that's where it all starts for the Brazo. Headwaters. Heading down that way. What a view, huh? Never gets old. How you doing there, sunshine? All right. Barren up here. This climb is kicking my butt this morning. Look at that, huh? Wow. Yeah, third day without coffee. First time ever I miscounted something like that in my food stores. So, oh well. A little slower than usual. Commenting on the snow still in these hills. My goodness. Last summer. Nothing like this. I mean, look at that. And then over there, toward Cataract Pass, that's a lot of snow. Yay, first view of the pass, right down where those hikers are. Excellent. We're gonna stop down here and take our break, have our breakfast. Head down in the car. Woohoo! Back at the river. So, uh, Nigel Pass is right there. We're gonna go over there and have breakfast. If you go that way, it's Cataract Pass in the White Goat Wilderness. 
Cataract Pass is spectacular. I'd like to get over there. And uh, Eb's gonna pick her way across here. And I'm gonna follow. Sure, it's funny what you remember. When Evelyn and I were out here last year with Olivia, we stopped here for a break, and I laid our rain fly out here, because just like this morning, it was soaking wet. And then we sat here and had our break. Isn't that crazy what you remember? Yeah. A little spot in the forest like that. So, we're in the home stretch now, we've even seen cars. Yeah. You can see the road from up high. I haven't seen. A car. Like 10 days. Okay. Yeah. I haven't been in a building in 10 days. <laughs> what do you mean, a tent's a building? No, yeah. Uh. <sighs> that was a tough climb up, Nigel, for me this morning. Holy mackerel. That was tough. And then, uh, but we've picked up our pace since. We're starting to warm up a little bit. And we're what? Less than three kilometers from the vehicle. The motorized vehicle that will take us to our other motorized vehicle and then to a hotel. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're about three, less than three kilometers from Nigel. And uh, speaking of Nigel, so we pulled in there to drop the car like 11 days ago, whatever it was. And we pulled in and I looked over and I thought I recognized somebody I know. And so I was like, huh, oh, I wonder. So I, think, I said, I think that's so-and-so. So, -and -so. so uh, sure enough, we did I back up. It is so-and-so and that so-and-so is Joey. Uh, Joey's uh, YouTube channel is My Own Frontier, which is just a spectacular hiking channel. Great. I mean, really, it's really great. Really great. And he's just a great guy. And so uh, I met his group of friends. They're out here hiking Brazil. Not and anymore. <laughs> no, they're long gone. I think they were heading down to Fish Lakes after that. So oh. um, anyway, just a great group of guys. I recognized all of them from all of his different videos. They all go out different times and stuff. And we were just talking about the fact that Evelyn had lost her ursac. You didn't bring it. Well, we didn't bring it from home. I, for, <laughs> I forgot it, fine. Sorry, yeah, we, we, we just didn't have it. So Chuck, Chuck, right? Yeah. Oh God, I hope I've got your name right, Chuck. I'm I, right. Because I met all you guys at the same time. Chuck had a spare ursac and lent it to Evelyn. Now, lent it because- We're returning it. We are returning it because I'm gonna see Joey next month and we're gonna do a hike together. That's the plan. So uh, pretty excited about that too, because I've been watching his videos for uh, for a real long time, and it's going to be fun to do a trail with him. We're not going to say any more about that right now. It's, <laughs> let's just say it's a very long trail, uh, longer than the south boundary. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. It's but not anyway, the AT. It's not the AT. It's not the AT. No, that's right. Anyway, Chuck, thank you. Uh, I will get your Ursac back to, uh, to <laughs> Joey in a month, and uh, we really appreciate you lending it to us. It made all the difference in the world. So we're going to finish our break, and uh, <laughs> we're going to head to the car. Show off! <laughs> I'll try it. Whoop. <laughs> I think last time we walked this section, you and your sister were playing ABBA. Really? From Mamma Mia, the movie. Here I go again. Literally. Heard our first traffic <laughs> in 10 days. Remember this from our Brazo hike? <sighs> yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> Where are you going? The trail. <laughs> I'll meet you up here. Alright, you do that extra. That extra little hundred meters. Yeah, I need the exercise. Just telling Evelyn, even walking this road to the car, look at the view. <laughs> I, I came back with, it's Alberta. Yeah, it's outstanding. Just a gorgeous area of Alberta. If you live in Alberta, I envy you. Yeah, well, we used to live in Alberta. We were in, we lived in Edmonton. That's true, it's true. So uh, we've had our time out here, but, but look, at, look at that. Okay, almost to the car, which is a truck. 
the F-150. Yeah. Oh so let's go find out how's the hike. Well, kiddo, 10 days, 120-ish kilometers. Name the campsites. Okay, Medicine Tent, La Grasse, Cairn Pass, Cairn River, South Esk, Isaac, Aret, um, Brazo River, and Boulder Creek. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and we're here. Woo! So, Evelyn, I'm trying to hold this GoPro. Uh, how's the hike? Okay, I put a lot of thought into this, and I think, um, I think it's a really spectacular hike. I don't think you can get isolation like that much else. And the views like were went beyond our expectations. I think if you if you take your time, I think you can really enjoy it and relax like we did out there. Yeah. So I, th I think it was really great. Yeah, this is one of the best hikes of my life, bar none. Uh, you, please hike this trail. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's gorgeous, and, yeah. it, and it needs to be hiked to be preserved. Please hike this trail. It's worth every day. Uh, what was your best day? Probably Cairn River to South Esk, which hardest is the day. hardest one because you can't. There's no you have trail. To really find it, <laughs> but yeah. it's really rewarding when you see the bridge, which is in perfect condition. Yes, I'm going to go correct that online because it really affected my trip planning when someone said you can't get to the bridge anymore. I get how it was hard though to figure out. Yeah, I mean, out but but you can get to the bridge. You can, and it's there. So uh, fantastic. So yeah, just an excellent hike. This is uh, right at the top of my list. Yeah, me too. You were the best, by the way. This kid. I mean, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. I mean that. I'm so proud of her. Oh, I just, I could, I'll tear up if I say much. No! More, so. uh, oh, Evelyn, before we go. Yes. How's the beard? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next time. Thanks for watching.